Placing your baby skin to skin directly after birth is a simple yet beneficial practice. It's usually done immediately after birth and as much as possible during the first few days of your newborn's life. However, there is no age that skin to skin is no longer recommended. It will help regulate your baby's heart rate, breathing, blood sugar, and temperature. It also helps you and your baby's brain to release a hormone called oxytocin. This hormone release will make you feel more bonded to your baby, help milk to be released from your breasts, and aid in the healing process after birth. During skin to skin contact, your baby will be placed on your bare chest wearing only a diaper. A blanket may be placed over top of them for warmth. At this point, your baby may start bobbing their head up and down and side to side searching for a nipple. Letting them explore and latch on their own while you support them can be a good way to start breastfeeding. The practice of doing skin to skin often will calm your baby and bond the two of you. Practicing skin to skin can also be a great way for dad, grandma, or any other support person to bond with the baby. When it comes to holding your baby for breastfeeding, there are many positions to ensure that both you and your baby are comfortable. The following will also be sure that your baby is latching properly. Laid back breastfeeding is when you place your baby on your chest, belly to belly. The baby may bob their head up and down or move it back and forth looking for the breast. Gently lead them to the breast while letting the baby rely mostly on instincts. This can take several minutes to happen. Leaning back helps you rest while gravity holds your baby close. Football hold. This position is for holding your baby next to you. Support the back of your baby's neck and bottom so the baby's body is in a straight line. They should face your breasts and have their belly close. Be sure to never lean over the baby, always bringing baby to you by sitting up straight or slightly reclined. This position is great for a mom who delivers by C-section. Cross cradle. In this position, you're going to be bringing your baby across your body, facing you and belly to belly. Be sure to hold the back of their neck and bottom so their body is in a straight line. Let gravity help you hold the baby close by slightly reclining. Cradle hold. In this position, you're going to be holding your baby to your breasts while supporting them with your forearm. Be sure that baby's head and bottom are in a straight line and looking at you belly to belly. In this position, your baby should be able to tilt their head back slightly to be able to latch on deeply to your breast. Side lying. This position allows you to lay down with your baby on a flat surface to breastfeed. Face your baby with your nipple to nose and belly to belly. Be sure that your baby's bottom is pulled close. Once your baby is done feeding, be sure to follow safe sleep practices by laying your baby on their back in their own sleep space. Latch is one of the most important parts of breastfeeding. A good latch will make breastfeeding comfortable for both mom and baby. Before you start, you'll want to make sure that baby's ears, shoulders, and hips are in a straight line. Next, lean back. It's important to bring baby toward you with his belly facing your belly. Once you're in a comfortable position, point your nipple toward baby's nose, gently touching his top lip. Baby's mouth will open looking for food. Let the head tilt back and bring baby toward the breast chin first. Once he's attached, you'll see that his cheeks and his chin are pressed firmly against the breast and his nose is free to breathe. His lips should be flared outward. If the latch feels uncomfortable, simply stick your finger in the side of the mouth, breaking the suction, and try again.
Many mothers ask questions about how much to feed their baby after birth. On the first day, your newborn stomach is the size of a large marble. The colostrum, the very first milk you will produce, is enough to fill your baby's stomach. Colostrum is all your baby needs for the first few days. The first milk hydrates, gives proper nutrients, and helps protect your baby from illness. By the third day, your baby's stomach grows to the size of a ping pong ball and is able to hold almost an ounce. At this point, the baby will nurse frequently in order to help your mature milk come in. Your baby should eat around eight to 12 times a day. By the end of the first week, your baby will continue to nurse frequently to build your milk supply. Your infant's stomach now can hold around two ounces of milk. Feeding every time at the breast will ensure a good amount of milk for your baby. Supplementation is usually not necessary at this point. When your baby is hungry, they will show you cues before they start to cry. Watch for cues such as sucking on their hands, making suckling sounds, or searching for a nipple. These actions let you know that your baby is ready to feed. Watching for these signs will help you and your baby feed more successfully. Some newborn babies are extra sleepy. If your baby is not showing hunger signs around every two to three hours, you will want to wake your baby to feed. Ways to wake your baby include skin to skin contact, rubbing your baby's cheek, gently caressing their feet, or changing their diaper. If your baby falls asleep quickly at the breast, you can try compressing your breast with your hands, which will squeeze some milk into your baby's mouth. This can help wake your baby to finish a feeding. Your newborn is experiencing many new sights, sounds, and smells, which can cause fussiness due to overstimulation. Some ways to try and calm your baby are skin-to-skin -skin contact, a repetition of rocking, swaying, and even whispering shh can calm baby. These sounds and motions are very similar to what a baby hears and feels in the womb. babies eat a lot, usually about 12 times per day. Some moms notice this and worry that their breasts aren't producing enough milk. Thankfully, there are many ways to tell that the baby is getting enough to eat. Tracking weight is a great tool. Newborns tend to lose weight at first, but should be back to their birth weight by about two weeks old. Once your mature milk comes in, your breasts may feel full at the beginning of a feeding and soften as the feeding goes on. Your baby will also show you fullness cues to let you know when they've had enough to eat. Some of these fullness cues include turning away from the breast, irregular sucking patterns, and relaxed open hands. Lastly, what goes in must come out. So counting diapers is a great way to know for sure that you are providing enough breast milk for your baby. On average, your baby should have about four dirty and five or six wet diapers per day. 
If your baby is losing weight, or if you're concerned about low milk supply, contact your local WIC breastfeeding peer. Baby's diapers are more than just a stinky chore. As I mentioned before, they contain a lot of information about whether or not your baby is getting enough to eat. Here's what's normal for an exclusively breastfed baby. All babies' first poop is going to be black and sticky. This tar-like substance is called meconium. On days one and two, your baby should have one to two stools and one wet diaper per day. By day three or four, your baby's poop should turn green and they should have about three poopy and three to four wet diapers per day. By day five, breastfed baby's poop turns mustard yellow and can have many different textures. Often it looks watery or seedy. Your baby should be having three or four stools and five to six wet diapers per day. After four to six weeks, your baby may have fewer bowel movements, sometimes even skipping a few days. This can be normal for exclusively breastfed babies. Hand expression is an important skill to learn, but can take time to feel comfortable with. It's a great way to relieve pressure in your breasts caused by engorgement. Engorgement is the severe swelling that can happen when your breasts are over full with milk. It can be difficult for baby to latch when this happens, so removing some of that milk can help baby latch deeply onto your softer breasts. You can use hand expression in a warm shower, or you can collect the milk you release in a clean and dry container. You can start hand expression by washing your hands and getting them nice and warm. Massage your breasts with one or both hands by lifting and rolling the breasts to soften it. Use a C shape with your index finger and thumb about an inch away from the areola. Gently press back into the breast and together and then release. Move around the breast to release even more milk if you don't see milk right away, don't be discouraged. Spend up to 10 to 15 minutes on each breast. If you need more help, please contact your WIC breastfeeding peer. Paste feedings are important for all babies that take a bottle. This way of feeding focuses on responding to your baby's hunger cues and mimics breastfeeding. It also helps avoid problems with latching at the breast. To start, you'll want to hold your baby in an upright position with the bottle horizontal. Lightly touch the bottle to your baby's upper lip. If your baby is hungry, they will actively move their head side to side and open their mouth for the bottle. Give your baby the bottle, but take frequent breaks about every three to five swallows to prevent your baby from eating too quickly. By doing this, your baby will have to work a little harder to draw the milk out, but will have more control over the flow of the bottle. To further mimic breastfeeding and help with vision development, go ahead and switch sides during the feeding. When your baby shows signs of being full, such as slow or sucking, eyes wandering, or hands in an open and relaxed position, you can slowly remove the bottle from your baby's mouth. Your baby may not finish the bottle, and that's okay. By pacing the feed, you will avoid overfeeding and reduce fussiness.